The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Today, it's all about how to create your brand while receiving some great business coaching in the process. And welcome to Toronto Speaks Entrepreneurship, and I'm your host, Evan Kozner. I have the pleasure of hanging out with two of my really good friends, because every once in a while, you got to bring your friends on TV. And uh, these are two experts that I absolutely love and adore. I've got Debbie Wood, who is a business consultant from One Stop Business uh, Consulting, and Jeff Kahane uh, from Icon Creative, who is the creative director at Icon Creative. So welcome to today's show. Welcome. Thank you. you. You're welcome. So um, first of all, we want to get these calls rolling in. So you've got two experts in marketing and branding, and it's really simple. I know you're sitting at home. Call. It's 416-446-7090. Now, if your phone call is too old for you, you can go on Facebook, facebook.com slash Toronto Speaks. Twitter, you can tweet us at Toronto Speaks. And if you want to go back to what was introduced in 1970, I found out, I believe, uh, Toronto Speaks at rci.rogers.com is our email. So Toronto Speaks at rci.rogers.com. Um, any questions you've got, if it's like a logo question, if it's a branding question, if it's a business strategy question, that's what they're here uh, to help out with and help your company or an idea you've had. That's why you want to call in today. So. I guess first things first, I know I just introduced you, but what do you, you both do? So Debbie, you want to tell us a little bit about business coaching and what all you do on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis? Well, my day-to-day -day is really interesting. Sometimes I'm working with entrepreneurs, people who are just starting up. Sometimes I'm working with Fortune 500 companies. But no matter what level of business it is, the need's the same. How do I get more sales for my product? That's basically what I address. That's what people want to know. At the end of the day, they say it in all sorts of different ways, mm -hmm. but it's like either we're not making enough money or we're not getting the exposure we think we should or we've got the greatest thing since sliced bread and the world doesn't know it. <laughs> and that's where I step in to help uh, uh, them see. And are they usually right? If they Absolutely. Yeah, the sliced bread, yeah, the latest thing? Well, you know, I've seen some products that I don't know if the world the world can live without, yeah. but you know the majority of people they love their product, they love their business, they love their idea, and they just don't know how to get great market penetration. And what's a horrible idea, or like what makes up a good idea or a bad idea, and what do you do with it once you get it? I don't know, you know, because I would have thought that maybe something as far back as the pet rock was an awful idea, <laughs> but yet it sold millions of millions of pet rocks. It's really finding out what the product is, who's the market, is there a need in the market, are they priced right, strategied right, and then how do we get it out there? And then my guess as well is like there are some great ideas and then there's also some absolutely horrible ideas and it can be anywhere in between. So you want the right spin, you want to find the right market, and for that we go over to you, Jeff, who Thank you're, you, the, you're the brand master, as I like to say. Um, awesome. All the, the company stuff that I deal with um, usually goes through you, and we've created lots of brands and uh, companies yep. together. Absolutely. So what's what makes up a great brand? What, like, what do you do? Go, okay, go into well, the, yeah, the basics. What's the basics of? Okay, well, I'm a creative director and a creative coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I help people develop their ideas. I mean, everybody has a vision. Everybody has a you know, uh, an idea that they want to develop, whether it's a charitable organization or a new product. And, um, you know, and, they, and there's an expression that they want to make out there in the world. So what I basically do is I, I um, really do a lot of listening to hear what's important to them and um, translate what that vision is that they have into a tangible visual uh, identity, a brand that they can, um, so that their vision is actually communicated the way they want to communicate it, but also in a way that's really simple and clear so that the layman can, can, can understand as well. And for creative coaching, which you do, what, what's the process of creative coaching? Um, well, it's, it's you know, basically uh, a lot of questions. Um, you know, I ask questions like, um, you know, what are, what are five things, give me five words that represent what you're trying to create, like what are what what's give me five words that express the idea that you're out to, to create. So it might be, uh, you know, I want something that's fresh. I want something that's young. I want something that's, um, you know, um, 
holistic, whatever it may be. And you know, getting the getting uh, the client to actually express this, you know, uh, helps to um, guide the process quite a bit. And Debbie, what's the process when you're working with a CEO or a CFO or just someone who's starting their own business? What do you, what do you go through when you're initially working with them? Well, first of all, it's try to get an image of what the business really is. Mm -hmm. You know, are they a manufacturer? Are they a wholesaler? Are they a retailer? Are they direct to the consumer with their own storefront? It's understand, or are they an e-business? Yes. And it's really- Very popular now, uh, too. Very popular. More and more people are stepping into the e-business world. And who do they think, you know, so it's really understanding what's their product, how do they think they should be selling it, and who do they think their perfect buyer is? Yep. And then how do we reach them? How do we appeal to them? And then often I might say, you know what, I think there's a whole other market or a whole other buyer for this product. Mm -hmm. Let's try to look at something else. And Jeff, I know like there's a lot of misconceptions about what's a brand, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got lots of people who think that just a logo is a brand. And sometimes um, I know when I'm often working with entrepreneurs, just having text and having a simple font they consider to be their brand and oftentimes oh, a wonderful thing. When you're going into more in-depth branding of companies and organizations and the Fortune 500s you've worked with, what what does that um, look like and what actually is uh, a brand by your terms and definition? Well, there's a very big difference between a logo and a brand. A brand is um, uh, a promise. A brand is the psychological and emotional connection mm -hmm. that um, you have with your client. So, for example, you know, if you're um, uh, a yoga studio, for example, uh, you know, there's a particular expectation you have about going to a, a yoga studio. You expect to have, um, you know, something that's you to walk into a world that's, that's peaceful, where, where it's um, organic and, and that sort of thing. And basically, um, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, the, the brand is about the promise that you're delivering, whereas a logo is a mini condensed version of all of that. So mm -hmm. you have to sort of take all of your, whatever your promise is and get it into a really, really small package that's really easily to understand, yeah. really easy to understand. And then do, have you worked with the CEOs and CFOs and different people from companies that kind of have that same interpretation of what brands are and how to work with them and, and play with them and market their companies? Most large companies have a very specific brand mm -hmm. and a very specific image. What most of them have gotten lost in is the technologies there are to get their messages across. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's just not necessarily door-to-door -door sales anymore. You know, there's Twitter, Facebook, so many different ways, which is a great advantage, especially for entrepreneurs, of how you can get your message out for next to nothing. Yeah, it's a whole different like realm it's a different of world. different things. That you've, got, you've got Facebook covers, and you've got all these different things all put together when it or comes to marketing. Or a great blog about your product. You for know, there's just so many different ways to approach it now. And we're going to be touching on that very shortly as well. So. I guess briefly, we've got a minute or so before we start taking your calls, so definitely call in. Um, what's one marketing piece of advice that you have right off the top? <laughs> That's a quick question. <laughs> well, I to go to that. Be passionate and love your product, and that will guide you all the time. Really? And, yeah. and where, do, where do you see it going? Where does it take you? Like, where, where's the, you're going along this path. You've got the, the great vision. How do you know when you've made a wrong turn? When sales drop the market responds instantly. So you just look at exactly what I'm the... really black and white. You know, we launch a strategy, see what the result is. If the result wasn't the intended result, launch another one. And Jeff, is, it, is that the time when your business isn't doing so well that you want to go in and market it like, and spend extra money on marketing? Um, well, it's, it's an it's a interesting question. Um, you know, there's a lot of rebrands that do occur. You so. know what? We're, why don't we take this as soon as we come back? We're going to take a quick break, but uh, we've got lots of your questions coming up, so be sure to call us, 416-446-7090. You can tweet us at Toronto Speaks or Facebook us at facebook.com slash Toronto Speaks. Don't go anywhere. There's lots more to come when we come back. Welcome back.
back to Toronto Speaks Entrepreneurship. We're uh, talking all about branding and marketing your business. We've got two pros here, so be sure to call in and take advantage of them. We've got Debbie Wood, who's a business consultant from One Step, sorry, One Stop Business Consulting, and uh, Jeff Kahane, who's the creative director at Icon Creative. You can call us. Our phone number is 416-446-7090. You can tweet us your questions at Toronto Speaks. You can also send us a message on Facebook at facebook.com slash Toronto Speaks. And it's all about branding your business and marketing. So if you've ever had that idea and you've wanted to uh, create your own company or you've just launched one or you've had one for years and you might need a brand refresh or you're, you're getting stuck somewhere in your uh, business, feel free to call us and uh, we'll, we'll be happy to talk to you on today's show. So we're, we're back. What's, uh, what's in a logo, Jeff? What's in a logo? Yes. Good question. Yes. <laughs> uh, big question. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, uh, listen, you've got you've got a lot of things that you have to condense. I mean, for me, the kind of logos I like to develop, I like to develop really, really tight, um, uh, distilled images. Um, I, I find that uh, less is more. Yeah. Uh, quite a bit with with uh, a lot of the brands that I develop. And um, what's in a lo- what's in a logo? I mean, you really have a very very short period of time to communicate a message about what you're trying to do. I mean, if you're, um, you know, I mean. You have you have color, you have font, you have treatments like vintage treatments or that sort of thing, and it's all designed to express uh, in a really really quick way what it is that you um, are up to. So give me a, so, a couple examples of colors. So if you're going more corporate or, or less corporate, um, what's what colors should people? Well, every color for? has a meaning. Mean? Okay. You know you can look it up. If, I mean if you're starting and you're you're going out there and you're starting the whole process, I mean you can definitely go and Google search you know uh, color meanings and then you'll find out. And it's really quite unbelievable when you start looking around at all the brands that exist in the marketplace. Yeah. You know you look at McDonald's. McDonald's is yellow and red, and it's like okay, well yellow there's the bread and the fresh the freshness and the um, you know the French fries, and it's and then the red is the the heat and the energy, and come and get it, and you know all of this is designed to uh, elicit a reaction really really quick and get you into the buying uh, the, the mood to the, to make the purchase decision. So. Um, yeah, I really find that all of that really, really fascinating. If you start looking around, driving down the street, and really, really look around everything that's that's out there, it's it's and the different quite color. amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, and Debbie, when you go into business consulting, yes, what are the problems that you're seeing businesses have? Um, is there has it changed over the years, or are there more of the same issue that you've been finding recently? What's well, I think. The speed of business has a pace. Mm-hmm. You know, things get are expected instantly now because of, you know, email, all the social media, all the different things that people deal with. And a lot of people are just lost in how do I run my day-to-day business and stay on top of everything that's happening? How can I have time to be creative and do it on a reasonable budget? Yes. You know, so it really is, you know, Business has become more complex mm-hmm. and yet ambiguous at the same time. There's no clear, like before, you're either on radio, you're either on TV, or you're doing direct mail. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> and, you, and now it's everywhere. It's all over the yeah. yeah. Well, we, I promised we'd uh, start taking calls as soon as we got back, and we do have a caller on the line. Betty, Betty, what's your question? Hi there. My question is for Jeff. Um, it's more in terms of branding and specifically creating a logo. I'm just wondering. How do you find the balance between, you know, conveying the inspiring message behind your brand and then balancing that with being too cheesy? Is there is there a line? How do you know when you cross it or not? Too cheesy. Too cheesy. Yeah, too cheesy. What's the, the line between? Sorry, and Betty, one more time. It's just yeah. the, the line between um, how cheesy it is and being too formal? Yeah, it's sort of like how do you how do you balance the uh, conveying the, the inspiring message behind your brand, and and how do you know when it's you know cheesy or you've gone too far? How do you know when you cross that line? It's a really good question because a lot of times um, the reasons why a lot of brands fail is that you know they're they're over created and overproduced and overthought and sometimes you know you can have something that has nothing to do with the type of product and service that you're that you're uh, you know trying to put out there and just because you like the design of a particular font or that sort of thing or you like this particular image so you decide to include it in your brand. Um, it really depends on what your product is. What is what's your product or service? What is your product or service? Uh, it's actually a branding for a television channel. Branding for a television channel. Yeah. Okay. And who's the market? Who's your tar- who's the demographic? Uh, 
it's mostly 25 to, to 34. It's going to be online both on a channel and online. So we, I need sort of like a, two different things because I feel like the online market will be a bit younger, but the television channel is an older audience. So it's creating a brand, branding and a logo that will kind of match both, both the online audience of the YouTube generation and then also one who's going to watch linear television. Okay, well, I would say first and foremost, if you're branding a television channel uh, or that sort of, a, of an icon that you're looking for, it's got to be really, really clean and simple. I mean, you, you look at the Rogers logo. You know, if you look at any other logos that exist out there, I mean, they are so simple because, you know, you have to consider where you're going to put them. You know, they're going to be, you know, in the corners of the screen. They're going to be, uh, you know, the, you, you also have to think about the marketplace and how to differentiate yourself from all these other television station logos. And it's just, it's all about, um, you know, if you, if you get too complicated and complex, I can understand what you're trying to say now about getting too cheesy. Um, you know, again, it, it depends on, uh, you know, how broad this station is as far as the content goes. I mean, again, it's going to depend on what the content is going to, uh, uh, going to be and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, is there something that you're, you're, you're uh, having an issue with right now? Is there like a, a, a look that you've received, a look and feel that you're, you're exploring and you not don't like it? What, what is actually is the issue for you? Or are you just at the beginning of this process? Uh, just at the beginning of the process, you know, I'm wondering, should I try and, and do it myself? Should I try and pitch ideas that way? Or is it better to outsource because maybe then you're not as attached to it? Maybe that's when the, the, the line is drawn, right? Where if I create it, then maybe it will be a bit too cheesy because I'm too attached to the brand. Do you think, do you ever come across that with clients you work with? Um, absolutely. I mean, I, I highly recommend that you, you take the time to express what it is that you want to create to somebody who's going to, you know, either somebody who is a branding specialist, you know, somebody who is a really good graphic designer. Um, you know, there's graphic designers that just design and there's graphic designers who have a really keen insight into, you know, the psychology as well. Um, if you find, find a good one, they can do both. Um, but uh, I, 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 would, I would say, Express your ideas, get them out there to somebody that you trust or somebody who has a good portfolio of work and see if, like, let them run with it. I mean, there's lots of uh, affordable opportunities right now to get all sorts of selection of, uh, of branding ideas and so forth. Uh, I mean, you can always sketch things out to give them an idea of where you're going, but, you know, somebody who really specializes in that sort of thing can give you a really, really, you know, cool product. And Betty, does that help you out? Yeah, for sure. And you know what, Jeff? I think you might be getting a call from me tomorrow. <laughs> well, my email's coming up. <laughs> yeah, so, but don't well, look at my website. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we appreciate uh, your call. Thank you so much for calling in. What did you hear out of that, Debbie? Well, the thing that I would add to what Jeff added for Betty is that the more she can articulate her view and vision of what her company's about, yes. you know, what is the, the message that she stands for? What's the difference of this? What are the words that describe it best? The more she can articulate it, the more a great logo and branding person can figure out how to person like personify that in the image. Mm -hmm. You know, often if it's just, you know, it's just, I'm just so excited. That's the hardest person to work with. Yes. You know, where I really want it to be about, well, we were talking earlier and Jeff was using the example of like of a law firm stands for words like integrity. Integrity and... Uh, compared to an ice cream shop, professionalism, which may stand for organic or fun or fresh, and really being able to portray that to people mm -hmm. that are in to deal with your branding, your sales, and your marketing helps us know what are the appropriate venues to fulfill what you see. That's great. We have another caller on the line, Melissa from Toronto. Melissa, what's your question? Hi, um, my question is, um, I'm building a startup right now, but I have a vision for it to go across various market segments. Um, it, this market segment is families, but it will have an online component, and it will also have like a board game component, and eventually a conference as well. So my question is, how early do I start the branding Like for that? like How early do I start considering the brand across all the different market segments? Or should I just worry about the first phase? That's a good one. I think there's two pieces. I think when you talk to the person who's going to, to be <laughs> brand, sorry, who's going to be no, doing your actual like branding, they need to know what your overall vision is. They'll want to stand out in you fulfilling that dream and what will keep articulating that. And then Jeff, you might have a different viewpoint, but 
for your actual marketing and launching, although we'd know what the future of the whole thing is, we would start with the practicality of how do we get the first stages done well to give us the capital and foundation to keep growing it out. Yeah, I was just going to say if you're if you're you know working on a startup budget and that sort of thing, and you have to go out there and communicate your idea, um, I think I think it's important to have uh, you know some sort of initial branding that at least has you look like you're professional, that you're trying to put something real together. A lot of times you see these logos and these projects, and they come together, and somebody's just sketched out a logo, and then they're like, here, you know, give me some money, help me do my project. Do you want to be a part of it? And people look at it, and they're like, I uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll call you later. But you know. I guess, I guess so what I'm going to say is spending a little bit of time or finding somebody to put at least a preliminary brand that at least communicates something clearly uh, is, is very valuable. Certainly if the, as you're starting to talk it around and, and uh, you know, start the process. And Melissa, are you still on the line? Yeah, like uh, what, what the overall vision stands for. Jeff? Sorry? Is that what the overall uh, vision stands for, she wants to know? Is in what sense? Sorry. Is that what you're getting at? Like to, to have some cl do some work to have some clarity on what the overall vision stands for and build that into my brand mm -hmm. in yeah, the early I think, stages. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't already done that that work to um, you know answer a few questions, and you know, I can uh, if you want to contact me, I can certainly give you uh, some some questions uh, to consider, and. Um, but yeah, you really develop what it is that you're trying to put out there in the world first and get it really clear and then, you know, hand that along to somebody who can translate that for you because um, uh, you, you really, you, you know, it's, 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 it, it, as I said, it is important to, to have something when you are talking about your idea that makes you look professional. Melissa, does that help you out? Because we're, we're on Toronto Speaks Entrepreneurship and I don't like to mess around. I want, if you're going to call in, I want to make sure that your, yeah, keep, your questions are answered. Absolutely. No, that really, really helps me a lot because, of, you know, some other people have said, oh, like, you know, just, just get out your first product and then <clears throat> worry about the branding afterwards. But really, my, pro my whole product scheme is really really about the difference that I want to make for family. So I do think it's crucial. But at the same time, when you're talking about like logo development and website development and the colors and the, and the touch and the feel that goes into the brand, I'm not sure how, when, at what point do I start to invest more money into creating the long-term brand strategy, you know? Well, so yeah, that's really I, helpful. You know, again, it, it's it's uh, you know, there's ways to get to get brands that that, uh, and, and I'm not saying that you want to keep reinventing the brand, but again, y if you are trying to to sell an idea, and uh, you really want to come across like you know what you're talking about, sometimes just having a business card that looks really really clean, okay, can actually get you that meeting. So it's really really underestimated how important that is. And Melissa, I just want to ca caution one thing. You have, and this is most entrepreneurs or startups, have this wide, varied idea for the product. I've never found anybody who was just, their idea was this big. Their idea is always very, very big. There needs to be some type of a strategy plan Absolutely. of how to do that growth properly, where the branding grows with it. Mm -hmm. And if I find where a lot of entrepreneurs fail is that they try to do too many things at once and didn't focus it and strategically and put their strategy out correctly to ensure that they got everything that they dreamt of. So does that help you out, Melissa? Definitely, yes. Right. Thanks. Everybody's, everybody's feedback is, uh, is really a huge contribution to me. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. And, and Jeff, you were going to say? No, I just want to make, be, be clear that I'm not suggesting to go out and create just some logo to, to, to uh, you know, to have. I mean, obviously, I, I'm just saying in the early stages, it is just important to have something to to uh, give yourself some credibility that does look good. Well, and recently as well, we've had, uh, I got to go check out Sharp Magazine, which is uh, a new magazine, and it's, uh, they also produce this book a couple times a year as well. And I think they've done a really good job of being able to, um, to put a brand together that sort of shows that um, their target market of executives and young executives, and maybe we can go into that, what makes a great brand, brand like that uh, very shortly as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, in today's business profile, as I mentioned, uh, we had the opportunity recently to go check out Contempo Media, who produces Sharp Magazine, and we're going to go uh, check that out right now.
We're here today with John McGurn, who's the publisher of Contempo Media and Sharp Magazine. So thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Evan. So what, what's your experience? You now have, I believe, what is it, the, the largest men's magazine and or the best known magazine? It, it's the number one men's lifestyle magazine in Canada. And who rated you for that? We I'm did. Gonna title all about you. Uh, well, there's not a lot of competition. It's yes. a pretty uh, barren category, so it's pretty easy to get to the top. There are some competitors, but they're not genuine, you know, magazines on a regular basis. You also have a book. So there's the the Sharp book, and there's the Sharp magazine, correct? Yes. So there's six issues of Sharp magazine, and then we do two uh, biannual issues of Sharp, the book for men, which are really uh, much bigger productions in a magazine, and they're really a compendium for for men on a broader scale. What was it like when you first launched? What was the experience like? What was the operation like? We knew what we wanted to do, so we knew where we wanted to go, so that made it a little bit easier. And there was people in the industry who were aware of our uh, what we had done in the past, so uh, that helped out quite a bit. You've had a lot of notable uh, guests uh, in your magazines as yeah. well, and this month you have Ryan Goslin. Yeah. Uh, who else have you had, and what has the experience been like on getting notable people into a newish magazine? To getting them, they uh, themselves are a brand, and they have, uh, you know, essentially they are a company, and they have publicists and people screening out mm -hmm. something, not, not much different than a Rolex would do in terms of, hey, do we want an association with that magazine? They are the same way. Yeah. You know, does this make sense for us? You know, are, are they on brand for, you know, Daniel Craig or Ryan Gosling? So we have to pass that test. How does staffing come into it? Staffing, uh, it because of the nature of our business, I mean, our, our full-time staff is just over 20, but we use a lot of freelance. When we hire staff, we tend to hire young. Mm -hmm. um, For what reason? Well, we, we want that fresh new enthusiasm, mm -hmm. and we want, we, want, we want people to grow with us. If you're someone who's new to reading the magazine, what direction are you planning to take the magazine over the next couple of years? When we look at our magazine, we're not trying to be a great Canadian magazine, we're trying to be a great men's magazine. Yes. And when we look at what the standard is, we look at the, 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 the best uh, international men's magazines out there. You know, we'll look at GQ and Esquire in UK, we'll also look at the US editions and say, hey, you know, that's where we want to be. Do you have business tips since you run Sharp Magazine about being presentable when it comes to, to business or anything cool that you've come across recently? I think, I think it's uh, absolutely, you know, whatever your brand is, you have to represent that up and down the line. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Sharp Magazine, where we're presenting ourselves as a, a stylish, upscale men's magazine, you know, it's important that when we're out in the field, whether it be uh, our administration people, our editors, or our account managers, that they emulate that brand. And John, if people want to find out more about Sharp Magazine and Contempo Media, where can they find you? They can go to contempomedia.ca to find out about our overall company, or if they want just great men's lifestyle content, they can go to sharpformen.com. Well, I really want to thank you for your time. Thank John McGurn, who's the publisher of Contempo Media. And don't forget to check out Sharp Magazine's The Book for Men, available on newsstands now. And we are chatting with Debbie Wood and Jeff Kahane. They're here answering your questions about marketing, branding, and uh, business strategy. If you want to call in, it's free advice, right? It's 416-446-7090. You can tweet us your questions at Toronto Speaks. You can also send a message to us on Facebook if Facebook's your thing, facebook.com slash Toronto Speaks. And I also understand we've got a caller on the line in a second, but first I want to um, touch base. When you're going into that logo design um, like meeting, like, or you start a, a brand right here with 3 to b which is a charity, and you started uh, Skates Are Great, which is one of our charities. Um, what's in a name, and like, how do you go from name to logo? Um, how do you go from name to logo? Well, I think you know, coming up with a name is, is so important to the process because, again, just like a brand, a logo, you have uh, something that you're speaking that has to communicate really, really clearly what it is that you're trying to do, once again. Uh, and at the same time, it's not even that. Sometimes it just has to be fun to say so that it can be catchy and it can, you know, uh, um, be something that people want to participate in somehow. Yes. You know, like a Google and, you know, that sort of thing. And, you know, Google has now become a, you know, it's a verb now, yes. you know, and, uh, which is amazing for any brand when you become a verb. <laughs> I hope to have a fur brand. <laughs> and everyone say it very yeah. surely. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got uh, yeah. Rashani on the line from Toronto. Did I pronounce your name correct? 
Oh, Roshni. Roshni, my apologies. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. So what's your question for our panel? Well, I already have, um, I've been blessed with an entrepreneur in the family. He okay. has an established business with recognizable name, brand, logo, and colors. Um, he has a problem with signage, and signage meaning there is not enough signage, uh, signage space on the, um, in the plaza that he has his office in. What other alternate marketing methods could he use so that his, the company's name can be recognized from the street like the other companies? And is it in a plaza or sorry, like whereabouts is it? What's it, what does it look like when you're it looking at it? In, yes, it is in a plaza and it's uh, shared with a, a drugstore, restaurants, shoe shop, um, uh, shoe repair shops. But there's no, uh, there's not enough space on the tall signage uh, that is quite visible on the street in North York. So my question would be, what would be other alternates that he could use in order to have his uh, company's name um, better marketed. Now, do you know, uh, are the landlords flexible, or is he on good terms with some of the other, uh, the other uh, tenants inside that plaza? Um, that I don't know. If there's flexibility with landlords, that might be something to look into. What, what sort of business is it? It's a financial business. It's a financial business. Okay, so you yeah. can't put a giant uh, inflatable ape on the top of the roof. No. <laughs> I wish I could. That, I, now you're talking my language. You know those yeah. wavy things that go back and forth? Yeah. Those things are the best. I love those things. The other ones that go, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a good question. That's, a, that, that's again, because you're, you're dealing with a business that's all about integrity and sophistication and trust and, you know, going out there and waving a flag and saying, hey, use me for that type of a business can be, you know, a little bit challenging from time to time. You know, most of the, you know, you see a lot of bus shelter ads that are positioned uh, near stores and say, you know, you know, you know, just turn left here, that sort of thing. Um, I might take it in a different direction. I might not worry so much about the physical signage because sure. if we have that limitation, we yeah. have that limitation. But we still have to brand and market the business. So maybe it's through developing networking. Maybe it's through developing seminars. Maybe it's online media information. Maybe there's webinars they provide. I don't know enough about the business, but there's a lot of different ways that we can get people to know and recognize you that they'll actually be able to Google you and find the physical location. You know, most businesses nowadays don't stop business by your sign driving Absolutely. by. You know, we're living in a world where that's not how people find business anymore. Yes. So yes, there's a signage issue, but I might bypass the whole signage issue and look at I how else we, can we promote this business because there's just not enough adequate ways to do the science. And I'm not going to say like a particular uh, company or, or not because I think we have a general idea of these different, well, it's jewelry companies that have, uh, you know, cash differently. Like if you're going to go trade in for, for gold, they have people who are walking around the street all the time, right? And they have the, the signage on them and they're walking back and forth. Do you... It depends uh, on the type of business that we're talking about. If you're talking about you're opening a new uh, chicken wing store, I mean, is it unreasonable to have dressed somebody up as a chicken and put something... I yeah, remember when you on them. Yes. Yes, I did something like that. that <laughs> it's in the middle of a trade show. Jeff had had someone running around this trade show that had nothing to do with chicken, and it wasn't with chicken wings, but you had a giant chicken no, running no. around with a sign, wasn't it? No, that's not true. It's that we had a trade show, and everybody always did the same thing, and it was in the, in the entertainment <laughs> industry, and everybody always put out their brochures, and da 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 da, and everybody came at six o'clock, and all the people that were there were always hungry, right? So with this particular uh, company that I was consulting for, uh, basically, it was like, okay, well, well, let's just shake this up, and why don't we just like put chicken wings in our booth just to get everybody there. Yeah. And then we basically had a mascot walking around that said, uh, it was a DJ company and it said, we'll DJ for food and it was a chicken. And basically everybody, we had a huge lineup and everybody had chicken wings and picked up a brochure and everybody was really, really grateful <laughs> that we considered them and what it was important to them in that moment, which was, which was really, really uh, awesome. Uh, does that help? But again, it, it depends on the type of business that we're talking about. Again, if you're talking about some sort of a professional service, a law firm, accounting services, you know, really financial consulting, a lot of these, a lot of, um, these businesses grow through different networking. I mean, you, you occasionally get direct mail, um, you know, inviting you to a seminar at a fancy restaurant, that sort of thing. Um, 
Sometimes you develop your business through the social and charitable organizations you're associated yes. with. Yes. You know, the community involvement becomes a way that others, you know, find you and become part of your business. I, I also don't know, I, weird idea, but I've seen, there was a person that I was friends with who did sidewalk arts and literally would paint on sidewalks. I don't know if you've ever walked by, but it catches your attention or having a light at night that shoots down or there are video projections, um, all different ways that you could bring in visuals into the storefront as well. It's not invasive and oftentimes it helps at night and sort of, People who are driving by in that community um, might see that. And, or the other option as well, um, they've got those giant video trucks. And they've got the uh, visual, the rolling panels, the rolling panels or uh, some of the video ones now that are all LED. If you park that in that parking lot and you get it cleared by the landlord that you're okay to do that for a couple of days, yes, it would cost a bit of money, but you've got your message there, particularly in prime time for drive-by traffic during rush hour in the morning and evening, and it's great. Jeff? Um, I just want to say it is possible for that type of business. Um, I mean, I don't know what your window space is like. What is your, what's your, do you have a nice big front window? It, you still there? there? A big front wind, yes, there's a big front window. However, because of the location of the office, the office is tucked in uh, and the shape of the plaza, the office is almost tucked in and the corner of the L. Okay. So it's, it's, you would, you would definitely need to walk into the plaza to actually see the signage that is available on the wall there. But in terms of the street, there is, there's nothing. And so other methods would, would definitely help. Right. I'd go radical. Forget about the fascia and figure out a whole new strategy of getting your name out there. Yes. I don't have a sign myself. Yeah, that, no, it's true. It's fine. I don't. From a branding standpoint, you've always been branding everyone else and sort of creating your own brand is... is yeah, that's what's why. what's needed for your business. That's no. why you need to sit down with someone, consult, you know, like, well, actually, what are you up to? What do I want? What's my budget? What's my desired results? And then see what we can come up with. Yeah. yeah. Does that help at all? I know it's a bit of a tricky question and we don't... It's fabulous because it, it is just exactly what I needed in order to dissipate any doubts about signage and what other the options are and, yeah. and also to make suggestions to the head office to say this is what I have been given this is my plate um, what can I add to my plate so that I can you know bring some more variety into the marketing strategy because sometimes people don't see beyond the, the lines of the box and you know, thinking outside of the box is, is much more creative it's more strategic and you would probably reach a wider audience by doing so. Well, thank you so much for calling, and I really appreciate you taking the time. I, I, it's a tricky thing because we aren't there and we can't see it exactly, but I, I'm glad that those uh, suggestions helped. I also uh, just want to mention when I saw it in Argentina, and I hope it doesn't come to Canada, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. At every single intersection, I don't know if this is legal here or if there's bylaws, so check into it. Again, the disclaimer before the show, <laughs> this is why they do it. Uh, they had giant like signs on them. and timed out, they'd walk across the street, and if you're standing in front of it, you have three guys who all have the same sign, and then they all turn around at the exact same time and have a time so they all walk off, blocking the intersection like crossing guards. It's ridiculous, but it's out of the box and different. I hope we don't see that. I see a new Why trend a whole new in trend. Toronto it's, tomorrow. We'll everyone's a right way to use it. Signs. Okay, so we've got, <laughs> we're going to uh, quickly we'll go. Evan, uh, are you there from Etobicoke? Evan? Evan, yeah, hi there. How are you? Good. First of all, I like your name, so thank you very much for calling in. It's, uh, you're, you're welcome. Go ahead. I like ahead. your name, too. Thank you. Uh, my question is, I have an e-commerce business for technology, and I'm wondering, how do I differentiate myself from other players on the market? I didn't fully hear the question. Can you say that one more time? Sure, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a technology e-commerce website, okay. and I'm trying to differentiate myself from other players in the market. How would I do that? Technology, e-commerce, how do you... Is there anything that actually makes you different? Uh, price point, obviously, but there's also branding and, and things like that, like the types of products that we sell, etc. Okay. I, I'm but not I mean, sure. in terms of branding... What's the product? It's technology reselling. Technology reselling. What kind of technology? Like laptops, tablets, etc. Oh, like electronics and stuff. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And just if we can be quick, and we might have to come back to you right after this because we've got to take a quick break shortly, but hang on the line if, we, uh, if I have to cut you off. But yeah, for technology reselling, what would I you do? I just have one question. Are you bricks and mortar or are you an e-business? E-business. Okay, good. 
So online technology shop, what would be different? What could, what could we do that for Evan that would make him stand out in a crowd? Uh, in terms of your the, your look and feel, or in terms of your uh, you know, mechanism of of marketing yourself for the online site, Evan. Like, are you talking about your brand, like how you look, how you're being presented, or are you talking about like all the you know you know? A, a... You know, actually, Evan, we're gonna think about this for uh, really quick. We're gonna quickly uh, go to our golf segment and stand on the line. We're gonna go check out this week's golf segment with Andre Courier, and we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back with your question, Evan. Okay. Mm -hmm. today at Golf Town at Topico and I'm joined by Andre Courier who is the Director of Academies and Services for Golf Town. So what are we learning today? Well we set up a curriculum after last week's interview so today what we're going to talk about is the grip. Grip essentially is how it's going to influence the club face arriving at impact. Okay. So what I like to do is just see how people normally hold it in their comfortable position and then we also have some training aids that we use at Golf Town to help you understand the importance of the grip. So you're going to place your hands here, your okay. left hand correctly. Now you notice the V of your left hand and the V of your right hand are parallel, pointing towards the side of your shoulder. Now everybody's individually built similar or differently, but it will give you a good reference point to start with. Now we place the golf club in your hand, try and simulate those same Vs pointing to the right side of your body, and then go practice. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, what are we going to explore next week? Next week, we'll start talking about posture. Now we know how to hold it. We'll talk about posture. OK, fantastic. Thank you so much. And we will be back here at Golf Town Etobicoke on our next episode. Toronto Speaks Entrepreneurship. Tonight I'm joined by Debbie Wood, who's a business consultant from One Stop Business Consulting, and Jeff Gahane, who's the creative director at Icon Creative. They've been here answering your questions about marketing, branding, and business strategy. So if you want to call in, it's not too late, 416 446-7090. We're going back to the line. Uh, Evan from Etobicoke is on the phone. Evan, you still with us? Yes, I am. Okay, so we thought about it over the break, and um, so you're reselling um, like electronics by the sounds of it online, and you want to differentiate yourself uh, from a marketing and branding standpoint, correct? Right, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so what we've come up with, we've, we've come up with a couple of things. Debbie, do you want to go first? Um, well, first of all, we might create some type of blitz of the week that if people come onto your site at a certain time, a special time, for X number of people we get something that's outrageous, you know, at a whole different level. Maybe we take advantage of the Groupon type services with a product that you can really get out there to get your name known. I don't know. Now, there's something that's unique that I do as a consultant from a marketing point of view, is I'll come out and meet with any company or have a conversation with any company. And whether we do business or not long term, I promise you at least one great idea. I think that Evan has a business that's unique that I'd need to speak to him for a while, mm -hmm. but I'd promise him at least one great marketing idea. And Jeff has some little branding tips in here for yeah. Well, uh, I was just going to say, like, you're, you're trying to differentiate yourself um, from uh, who are you? Who would you say are your primary? Who would you say is your primary competition? Essentially, it'd be the companies like Best Buy or Future Shop or other things that companies like stores that companies can go to to get the product. Well, I would say, what does your branding currently look like? Uh, to be honest, we haven't we haven't had much. Like we just started uh, about a month ago, mm -hmm. so we're really like hitting the ground running kind of thing. I would say, uh, you know, overall in your branding, as far as differentiating yourself, you might want to try and look a little bit more like these big brands. Uh, you know, it's it lends a lot of credibility. It lends a lot of it's it's what people are expecting to see in the layout of the website. If you go and you look at some of these big big competitors, go through it and identify what are the really really strong parts of each site. What is it that works here and what works there, and see if you can somehow take a little bit of this one, a little bit of that one, and um, 
as far as your actual brand, try and look really, really nice and clean. And because, you know, those types of, uh, that type of product service, it's all about integrity, it's all about uh, service, it's all about quality. And, you know, the, the last thing you want to do is enter into that market with uh, a brand that makes you look like everything's going to break. Like differential, like I'm going to be pink because none of my competitors are pink, isn't the wisest move um, in that type of an industry. Well, yeah, what color would you go for, Jeff? You got uh, blues and yellows and reds in that space right now. Yeah, um, you know, it's uh, a good question. Mm, purple, like a purple white scheme. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to think because you've got red, you've got red and white. So oh, I'm gonna let Jeff purple. think about yeah, that I'm for one second. Oh, he's my gonna, point he's gonna do this. No pink. That's no, all. No pink. You <laughs> but, know but, but, but not necessarily. Not necessarily depends on what types of products he's going to. That, it's always that, dependent. You know. uh, and Evan, I just want you to also take into consideration when building that trust and the integrity of your company, also look at the, the terms of service and your refund policies and stuff like that that you would be able to point out because you're competing against other companies that are going to be price matching and things along um, of that nature. So make sure that you've got all those sort of basics at this point because that's an industry standard now that's an expectation of customers um, that you're able to refund for 14 days or not put a special spin on it that makes you unique or you get a better price if you know what you want and you've already looked for it and you're coming to your store online purple and green jeff says purple and green <laughs> what do you think of that evan it's not bad. I like it. <laughs> well, you know, it's good if you think about it. I mean, it's you know, you, it's it's you're reselling. Are you reselling? Yeah. Okay, so there's a recycling component to it. There's your green and your purple is your uh, you know your quality and your uh, regal you know, and royal. Well, you know, purple is a combination of red and blue. So you've got uh, the trust of blue and you've got the energy and excitement of the red. That's kind of the way it works. Um, but uh, yeah, and I would use a really, really big, thick, uh, clean font. Does that help out, Evan? Yeah, it's actually great advice. I really like, I pretty appreciate it, guys. Well, we really appreciate your call. Thank you so much. And their information's online at the end of the show as well. We're going to go to our next caller, Teresa. Teresa, you've been waiting on the line patiently. Thank you. What's, what's going on with you? Hi, I am, I am a startup entrepreneur, and I have a small business, and I've built a brand for about a year now. Mm -hmm. And my, I have two questions. Um, one question is around when you're building, you know, uh, a brand. Obviously, you want people to associate to your logo and trust and integrity. How do you know when to rebrand, uh, especially when this audience has grown to love your brand within the first year of business? So, so when's the right time to rebrand sounds like the question. Is that right? Yes. Good. Okay. So, Jeff, going to go to you first? Uh, that's a really, really interesting question. What, 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 um, what, what don't you like about your brand now? Uh, it's not that I don't like my brand. I really like it. I just feel that as we grow and most startups, you end up, you know, hopefully making more profit. And in that, at that point, you can afford a much better branding strategy, a much sexier, cleaner looking brand than what you initially had when you first launched. Mm -hmm. um, so my concern is by doing a rebrand when my audience has grown with us for the first year. So it's not that I don't like anything, it's just mm -hmm. I want it to be cleaner, sexier. Well, I think that there's a way to do that. I think there's a way to tighten up your, there's always, you can always tighten up fonts. You know, you can always tighten up uh, what your imagery is. Um, you know, I find that the, 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 the larger the brand, it seems the more simple the brand. So if your brand currently exists and it's very, very complex or if it's made up of little bits and pieces or that sort of thing, and maybe there's a little bit of room for ambiguity and really understanding what it's about, um, you know, then it's, it's, uh, it's worth that exploration. Um, and my viewpoint's a little different. I would not rebrand. I might do what Jeff's saying, tighten it up make it sharper, crisper, truer, cleaner, but you've already invested a year into this brand. At a year, it's too mm -hmm. early to start over again. Yes. You know, maybe fine tuning, absolutely, but I would not recommend that you start a complete rebranding. The other thing is if your brand is, if, if, if you have a name brand, if you have a word mark, or if you have a name that everybody recognizes, and that's really what they're talking about, 
you know, it's a very different thing to tighten up fonts and, and all that, you know, and all that sort of thing versus sure. changing the name of the whole thing, which is not what I, I yeah. would definitely not well, recommend that if you've built that up. Teresa, I really want to thank you for your call. And we're going to go jump ahead to our technology segment where our resident uh, expert, Andy Walker, is about to join us. Andy, what do you have in store today? Thanks, Evan. If your business has a website, then you have what's called a domain name. That's a .com or a .ca web address used to call up your website. Mine, for example, is cyberwalkermedia.com. Getting one is easy. You can sign up on any one of hundreds of websites that sell them. But when you need to do anything with your domain name, you need a techie. Navigating domain name controls on some sites can be kind of scary and really confusing. And if you're not careful, one wrong move can disconnect the name from your website. That's why I like hover.com. This Toronto-based site is probably the easiest domain registration site I've ever used. You can register .coms, .cas, as well as some of the newer domains like .info, .tv, .pro, among many others. When you first visit the site, you'll notice how easy it is to use. All the controls are easy to access, and all your domains and related services are in one place. It's uncluttered and straightforward. Hover does not provide you with a web server to host your website, though. That's left to other companies. But they will handle your email for you, and the email service they offer is very robust. One of the best features on the site is the ability to create web shortcuts. You can take a long web address, like the one on Google Maps, and save it as a short web address on a web domain that you own. And you can reuse that and remember it easily. The best feature at Hover.com, however, is when you call them, they have an unusual no-hold policy. So you dial, the phone rings, and a real person in Toronto picks up the call to help you out. It's quite extraordinary. No one in the domains business does that, and few companies besides Hover do that in the tech industry at large. You pay $15 a year for your domains at Hover, and that's probably more than you would some other sites. But frankly, it's worth it with all the value-add services and help. Check them out at Hover.com. I'm Andy Walker, and you can find out more about me at CyberWalkerMedia.com. Back to you, Evan. Thanks so much, Andy. Debbie and Jeff are here answering your questions about everything business strategy and branding related. Do you, what kind of um, other tips do you have to kind of wrap up the show? We're getting towards the end of the, end of the show. What, what last minute tips do you have for uh, entrepreneurs? Well, a really Debbie quick tip. Yeah. Copy, copy, copy. Really? Look at businesses that may not necessarily be your market, mm -hmm. but have the same type of feel and have been successful, and look at what have they done. Mm -hmm. And if you look at enough of them, you might start going, oh, it's not that hard, or I could see myself doing this. Yeah. You can't reinvent the wheel every time. And Debbie, how do people get in touch with you if they want to uh, reach out to you later or hire you Ab for your services? Absolutely. Debbie? at onestopbusinessconsulting.com. And we're going to have that on the website as well. Jeff, what's your tip? Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with Debbie, but I'm going to extrapolate on that a little bit. I, I'm going to say that if you are building a brand, just make sure that you don't over design it. Don't go. Make sure you really understand or get somebody who really understands the right fonts to use, the right imagery to use, because you can really, really kill an amazing product if you're not getting your point across and the people aren't getting it that fast. And Jeff, how do people get in touch with you? Okay, well, I can be reached at um, info yes. at iconcreative.com. It's E-Y-E-C-O-N. Yes. Yes. Or an... info at ibrandyou.com. <laughs> you have ibrandyou.com? I, I have ibrandyou.com. <laughs> how about that? That's, perfect, yeah. That's right, but icon is spelled E-Y-E-C-O-N. Perfect. Yeah. Um, Anything else? We're, we're, we're just towards the, the end of the show. We've got a minute left. I learned a lot. Did you? First time on, on live television for an hour, giving yeah. your consulting. No, it was awesome. Anything we're missing in our brand? Oh. The show? <laughs> you really want to get into well, that? We still I was, don't know what's I behind to talk that about. door. I've, can we, camera, okay. I'm, I'm always wondering, no, oh, okay. So we do not know, we still don't know what the mystery is behind the door back there. Okay, so I tried, I tried looking, not so much. Um, <laughs> Yeah, everyone in the control room doesn't like me when I start running around. So, first of all, thank you so much for being here. You're both two of my really close friends. Um, I really appreciate it. Everyone, you can go online as well at rogerstv.com. Uh, there's lots of information and how to reach the two of you. Um, favorite logo? Are there any good logos? 
Uh, everyone that I've designed. Okay, well, as you know, we've also been running. Uh, we've also been running this new year a new you contest where uh, we're giving away a thousand dollar makeover courtesy of Got Style. Tonight uh, is the evening where we've all been waiting for it. We're happy to announce that Jennifer Winnick, and it's mm, I believe is how you pronounce the last name, is our winner. So congratulations to Jennifer. We're going to be in contact with you for more information on tonight's guests, Jeff and Debbie. Visit RogersTV.com. So now, go create your business and be on behalf of our guests and the team at Rogers and myself, Evan Kozner. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. See you soon.